Have you ever wondered why the United States paid an insane $15 million, $340 million in today's money for a vast expanse of largely unknown territory that would double the size of the nascent nation? Well, hit your oxen and join us on this trailblazing adventure through the bold decisions, significant impacts, and complex consequences of the Louisiana Purchase. As the United States expanded across the Appalachians following independence, the Mississippi River became an increasingly important conduit for the produce of America's West, which then referred to the land between the Appalachians and the Mississippi. Since 1762, Spain had owned the territory of Louisiana, a vast region covering 828,000 square miles that would eventually comprise all or part of 15 modern U.S. states between the Mississippi River and the Rocky Mountains. The Pinckney Treaty of 1795 resolved friction between Spain and the United States over the right to navigate the Mississippi and transfer goods at New Orleans, allowing American statesmen to feel confident about westward expansion. On October 1, 1800, within 24 hours of signing a peace settlement with the United States, the first consul of the Republic of France, Napoleon Bonaparte, maybe you've heard of him, secretly acquired Louisiana from Spain through the Treaty of San Ildefonso. This acquisition alarmed the United States, giving Napoleon control over the Mississippi River and the crucial port of New Orleans. Napoleon's grand vision was to reestablish a French maritime and colonial empire in the West Indies and the Mississippi Valley. He aimed to create a commercial block in the Caribbean basin, linking the strategic islands of Guadalupe, Martinique, and Saint-Domingue with Louisiana. This network was intended to bolster France's economy through the export of manufactured goods to the islands, which would in turn produce sugar, molasses, rum, coffee, and cotton for France. Louisiana would provide essential supplies like flour, timber, and salted meat to sustain French troops stationed in the West Indies. Additionally, New Orleans was expected to become a significant market for French goods and a gateway for settlers into the Mississippi Valley. Napoleon also intended to pressure Spain into ceding the Floridas to France, further expanding his imperial presence there. Confident in his plans, he had 200 medallions bearing his profile struck for distribution to Native American chiefs as a gesture of diplomacy. However, Napoleon's ambitions were thwarted primarily by the situation in Saint-Domingue, modern-day Haiti, France's most valued Caribbean colony, and a gateway to the Gulf of Mexico. In 1791, ironically inspired by the French Revolution, the island's slaves revolted under the leadership of Toussaint Louverture. After years of conflict, Louverture and his army of former slaves had successfully expelled the colonial forces from the island. Napoleon recognized that he did not have enough troops to reconquer Saint-Domingue and occupy Louisiana simultaneously. Consequently, he decided to first subdue the rebellion in Saint-Domingue. In the fall and winter of 1801, he dispatched an army of 20,000 men under his brother-in-law, General Charles Victor Emmanuel Leclerc. Toussaint surrendered to Leclerc within three months. In the winter of 1802, 03, Napoleon assembled an expedition at a Dutch port to reinforce a Leclerc's army and planned to use Saint-Domingue as a base to take possession of Louisiana. However, the combination of fierce resistance in Saint-Domingue, logistical challenges, and the outbreak of yellow fever decimated Napoleon's forces, and Haiti became independent in 1805. These setbacks led Napoleon to abandon his plans for a North American empire paving the way for the United States to purchase Louisiana in 1803. The U.S. president at the time, Thomas Jefferson, believed in an empire of liberty that would stretch across the continent. President Jefferson, however, faced a constitutional quandary. Though he yearned for his empire of liberty as an advocate of strict adherence to the Constitution, he knew no provision empowered him to purchase territory. Nonetheless, recognizing the immense value of Louisiana to the nation's future growth, Jefferson decided to proceed without a constitutional amendment. Jefferson sent diplomats James Monroe and Robert Livingston to France with instructions to purchase New Orleans and West Florida for up to $10 million. If that failed, they were to seek a military alliance with England as war between France and England loomed. Napoleon, recognizing the impracticality of maintaining his New World ambitions, 
decided to abandon his plans for Louisiana and offered the entire territory to Monroe and Livingston for $15 million. Despite this offer exceeding their instructions, they seized the opportunity. The Louisiana Purchase opened up vast tracts of land for exploration, settlement, and economic development. Central to the exploration of this new land were Meriwether Lewis and William Clark. Meriwether Lewis was an intelligent and literate man with considerable skills as a frontiersman. Recognizing the enormity of the task ahead, Lewis enlisted William Clark's help, whose draftsman and frontiersman abilities were even stronger than his own. Lewis respected Clark so much that he made him a co-commanding captain of the expedition, despite the government never officially recognizing Clark in this capacity. President Thomas Jefferson had high hopes for the Lewis and Clark expedition. He envisioned finding a water route linking the Columbia and Missouri rivers, connecting the Pacific Ocean with the Mississippi River system. Such a route would give the new western lands access to Gulf of Mexico ports and eastern cities along the Ohio River. At the time, explorers had only reached the ends of what would become the Lewis and Clark Trail up the Missouri River to Fort Mandan and up the Columbia River just beyond present-day Portland, Oregon. The Lewis and Clark expedition, known as the Corps of Discovery, launched from Camp Wood near St. Louis in the summer of 1804. That summer and fall, the team traveled upstream to Fort Mandan, a trading post where they wintered and prepared for the journey to the Pacific. In the spring of 1805, with high water and favorable weather, they traveled up the Missouri River to present-day Three Forks, Montana, following the Jefferson River. This brought them to the Shoshone tribe, who helped them traverse the Rocky Mountains. With Shoshone assistance, they crossed the Bitterroot Mountains and crafted canoes to navigate swiftly down the Columbia River, wintering at Fort Clatsop, 1805 to 1806, in present-day Oregon. Armed with detailed journals and maps, Lewis, Clark, and their team returned to St. Louis by September 1806. Along the way, they traded goods and established diplomatic relations with numerous Native American tribes, meticulously documenting the landscape and wildlife. William Clark's detailed maps were particularly valuable for future explorers, carving a route to the Pacific. Over the next two centuries, waves of settlers and immigrants would transform the central and western portions of what would become the contiguous 48 United States. This settlement drastically altered virgin forests and grasslands into a landscape of cities, farms, and harvested forests. It also displaced wildlife, such as the buffalo, and squeezed surviving Native American tribes onto reservations, forever changing the nation's demographic and cultural landscape. The Louisiana Purchase was the first major land session in a long series of expansions that spanned the 19th century. Within 50 years, the present-day borders of the contiguous United States would be solidified with the Gadsden Purchase. Each expansion, though greatly increasing the size and power of the United States, also exposed and exacerbated sectional weaknesses between the North and South, especially related to the contentious issue of slavery. The purchase also had a darker side, however. Creating new territories and states led to a series of fragile compromises, like the Missouri Compromise of 1820 and the Compromise of 1850, to balance free states and slave states. These temporary solutions heightened tensions over slavery, ultimately sowing the seeds of the Civil War. The Louisiana Purchase also overlooked the impact on Native Americans. The ceded lands were home to thousands of indigenous people. As settlers moved west, conflicts with Native Americans increased, often turning violent. Policies like the Indian Removal Act of 1830 forced Native Americans onto reservations, leading to immense hardship in the tragic Trail of Tears. This displacement aimed to erase indigenous cultures, as the U.S. government tried to assimilate Native peoples into Euro-American culture through brutal and coercive means. The Louisiana Purchase Agreement itself was composed of the Treaty of Cession and two conventions regarding the financial aspects of the transaction. While these documents facilitated the transfer of a vast territory from France to the United States, they made no provisions for the existing indigenous populations. The treaties and conventions focused solely on the land as a commodity, to be bought, sold, and exploited, disregarding the rights and livelihoods of those who had lived there for centuries. While the Louisiana Purchase seemed like an insane amount of money at the time, 
It was an investment that paid enormous dividends for the United States. This monumental transaction, initiated by President Thomas Jefferson and facilitated by Napoleon Bonaparte's unexpected willingness to sell, was about much more than land. It was about securing a critical river system and ensuring the nation's future economic and strategic interests. The United States gained control over the vast Mississippi River system through the Louisiana Purchase. This river network was the lifeblood of America's western frontier, essential for transporting goods and resources. The Port of New Orleans was a vital trade hub, providing access to international markets via the Gulf of Mexico, securing the western borders, and fueling the burgeoning economy. The Louisiana Purchase also had far-reaching implications for U.S. foreign policy, particularly in the Caribbean. Napoleon's failed ambitions in the Caribbean, especially in San Domingo, Haiti, highlighted the region's strategic importance to the U.S. This significance continued to shape American foreign policy, leading to later acquisitions like the Virgin Islands, a topic we explore in another video in detail.